Okay, hello, Ling201. Uh, I just want to make a brief video giving you a demo of how to make uh, morphology word trees using an interface on the uh, web, which I think is fairly straightforward and easy to use. Uh, so I've linked it to the course homepage here uh, through this links tab. Uh, so you can click on that and it's listed here uh, at the top of the syntax tree drawing software links. Uh, and in fact, it's kind of the only one I've used for that so far because it is um, so straightforward, basically. Uh, and I've used this in uh, in class during the live lecture viewing meetings that, for those of you who have inter um, who have attended those. Uh, so this may look familiar. Um, and either way, like I said, uh, it's straightforward and I want to sort sort of show you how to use it um, because when you're doing your upcoming upcoming midterm exam, it may be handy for you to um, implement it uh, so that you can kind of complete the morphology portion of the exam efficiently. Uh, but basically, like I said, this is originally designed for syntax, but we can use it for morph morphology. The S at the top of this tree here just represents sentence, and this is noun, phrase, verb, phrase, so on and so forth. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we get into syntax. I wanted to use this instead um, as a uh, example for drawing morphology word trees for that ambiguous term we had unlockable that we talked about in class or in the lecture. Uh, so I'll start off with that. And um, the way this works basically is that you input code into this bracket notation interface here. And then the um, online interface uh, basically translates it into a tree, which looks relatively nice and is pretty easy to save and insert into a Word document. So I'm going to simplify things here to start off with and just say, um, get rid of all these brackets in the middle here and just put unlockable. Uh, it's labeled as an S. Uh, it's not a sentence. It's just a adjective. So let's start out like that. So I just have two square brackets around the word unlockable. And the first part of this is labeling the um, part of speech, the lexical category as an adjective. But we want to break that down. Um, so let's break it down with um, the unsplitting off first. So we have a derivational affix there. And if we split it off like that, it'll label the unpart of that as a derivational affix in the tree and then lockable is separate. So what's lockable? It's an adjective. So we put that in brackets as well. And we get the same sort of structure over here. Uh, and this labels, this is like adjective one, adjective, adjective two, but uh, that little uh, subscript really doesn't matter. I guess I can turn that off potentially. Yeah, you could do that if you want. Um, you can also align at the bottom. That's going to come in handy later. We can play around with that in a second. Uh, okay, so... Right, um, now we've got lockable, which itself is a complex form because it consists of two different um, morphemes, lock and a bull. So we'll start off with lock being the verb, and then a bull is another derivational affix. And I just put another bracket around that to make it um, show up in the tree as the label for a bull, the suffix here. So now I've got my morphology word tree. So lock attaches to a bull. Um, to start off with, to make lockable, that's an adjective, and then we add unto that, so that means on something that's not lockable. <laughs> uh, also, I pointed out, you can make, uh, there's a little switch here for aligning at the bottom. I think that makes it look a little bit neater, uh, so you can use that if you want to. Um, I haven't played around with the other stuff here, and yeah, since you can have color, whether or not you can decide whether for yourself whether or not you'd like to have color, I don't really care. Um, but that's the default. Let's switch this around just so you see how easy this is. But remember, lockable, uh, unlockable is an ambiguous term. Uh, the first interpretation, which we diagrammed here, is that this is something which is not lockable. Uh, and then the other interpretation is that it's something you can unlock. So let's create unlock as a verb first. And for that, uh, we're going to have to combine un and lock together first like that <clears throat> and then put another bracket over here wait get rid of that bracket uh, so that the a bolt attaches second so now this is its own little sub bracketed off section of the word unlock um gets created first and then you can talk about something being unlockable as like something you can unlock um okay and everything looks fine and dandy down here at the bottom uh, that's how you play around with the bracket notation to get different kinds of tree structures. I'd recommend you practice that a little bit uh, with some maybe of the practice forms in the morphology practice exercises so you get a handle on playing around with the bracket notation. If you get like stray brackets in here, they can kind of mess up everything and you might have to like revert and start from scratch if things get too messed up and you can't figure out what's going on. 
Uh, but it will give you little like notes like, oh, I've got too many closed brackets. Or if I put an open bracket here, then I'll say one too many brackets open. So it'll give you some hints uh, and pointers about how to fix your code if you need to. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention, though, is how to get this into like your midterm exam or some uh, homework, homework exercise if you need to. So this is a image file down here. Uh, so on a Mac, as I'm using here, uh, I can just uh, hit um, control click. Uh, on a PC, you should be able to right click. Uh, assuming that still exists, I haven't used it in years, but I'm pretty sure it does because it is one advantage PCs have over Macs. But anyways, um, you right click this on a Mac and you can say save image as, uh, and I'll just save it on the desktop as unlockable. Um, and for this purpose, I've cleaned up my desktop. Some of you out there were complaining about my desktop status, so it's been fixed. Uh, and now you can just see I have this image file. It's a .png file on the desktop here, front and center. Uh, and I want to insert it into, like this is the, um, the morphology homework, uh, as you saw it. Uh, and if I want to just insert it in here, uh, what I can do is go to insert a picture from a file. In case you missed that, it went by quickly, just insert picture from a file. And then I can pick where on my computer I get the picture from. It's on the desktop, unlockable, and boom, it's there. Uh, and I just answered the problem. So you can size it however you see fit so that it's easy to read. I don't really care though, as long as you get it in there, it's nice uh, because it's a, sort of a well-structured uh, morphology tree. I don't have to worry about reading your handwriting. You don't have to worry, worry about scanning and printing and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I think that's all I'm gonna say about this for now. And then of course, like you can save your document, what have you, but it's in there. That's all you need to do to get this to work. Uh, like I said, try this out ahead of time before the exam, if you're thinking of doing it in this method, because um, I don't want you guys to get stuck up on the technology side of things when you're um, supposed to be focusing more on uh, how morphology works for the exam. Uh, and that being said as well, like if you do want to print out the whole like exam file and write things down on it and then scan that later and send the scans to me, that's fine too, if you prefer it. Um, all I care about is that you get it to me in some digital format um, and that you not uh, have to worry about the time consuming nature of the technology too much. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful for, helpful for you guys. Um, you can always let me know if you have questions and otherwise uh, I'll be seeing you in class and or at the midterm uh, virtually. Okay, see you later.